So I saw the Incredibles 2 trailer earlier this morning. I'm really excited. There, I said it. Now let's talk about the film, Ant-Man. But before I do talk about the film, I might as well talk a little bit of a history about this one, because this one's really interesting. You see, the original director of this film was originally going to be redirected by Edgar Wright, the director of Sha uh, Shaun of the Dead, Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, Hot Fuzz, The World's End, and his more recent film, Hot and his more recent film on um, Baby Driver. Oh, this is a very well talent. This is a very talented director. Oh, but the only film I did see from him obviously was the Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, which is uh, probably my favorite film from him. Um, and it's highly underrated. If you haven't seen Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, definitely check it out. It's truly worth your money. But uh, but uh, the pe but instead it's or not instead it's directed by Pey and Pey uh Peyton Reed, or which I'm not sure what. Film she's uh, this person is uh are directed. Hold on, what? Oh yeah, I don't know what this person has directed so far. Alright, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna waste any time. So, oh wow, uh, the feedback I've been hearing about this film is that the people who saw this film think it's good. Or uh, like as a good like they think it's a good film, not too spectacular, uh, but good. Alright, uh, so, oh uh, don't worry, my parents are. My sorry, my parents are downstairs doing that oh thing to my uh to to my mom's new dog or something that we got a few months ago. Also, anyway, the story is about our main character named Scott Lang, played by, oh well, Scott Lang played by uh Paul Rudd. Or he of course is an ex-convict, so he basically gets released from prison, on and then, on uh on tries to find a job, oh uh, but uh so that way he can get money and stuff and so that way he can build a new life. The only problem is his his ex wife, I won't let her, him see his daughter because of course he's an ex con. But one night, uh, one of his his best friends, played by Michael Pena, or uh, basically wants him to do another heist, or still well at least do one more heist. Or right, so what they did is uh, is of course they, or uh, he tries to uh, uh steal a a robot like some kind of a suit. Well, of course the Ant Man suit, which originally belonged, uh, to or a guy named Hank, played by uh, Michael Douglas. He has a daughter named, named Hope, played by Eugene... Uh, uh, Evangeline Lilly. That's what I'm trying to... I'm trying to pronounce her name right. Uh, but, along, but along the way, uh, since uh, he caught him on trying to steal the suit, he tries to teach him how to use... Uh, he actually te tells him to do a heist. Or uh, so, like, collect some technology and stuff, and then... Or uh, that way they can uh, track down a bad guy. Or uh, so that way he can destroy the original suit. But this kind, of, but of course, it kind of is too late because we do enter our main villain, on a yellow jacket, played by Corey. Sorry, played by Corey Stahl. Oh, uh, and of course, it's basically it is basically your typical Honey Guy Shrunk the Kid story, or like a person shrinking down, or the size and like absorbing the entire world and stuff story. Oh, yeah, and honestly, the way they do actually tell this kind of story, and P.S. I am, oh, well. Actually, I'll talk about that movie later on. Alright, I'm not gonna spoil it here this time. But anyway, oh yeah, um, uh, what else? Uh, but anyway, like the way they do tell it is really incredible. It does seem incredibly enjoyable. Or like the way, I mean, like it feels fresh. I was I'm trying. It was what I'm trying to say. Alright, so, or if I did have any problems with the film, one of them is kind of major. The major issue I have with the film is that the first half of the film is kind of slow. Oh, that's pretty much I gotta say. Oh, for that problem. Oh, it's just kind of slow. But then when it just... I mean, it's fine and it's good. Oh, it's just that I would love to see something great. Or oh, like a little bit more of a great build-up or something. It built up fine, but it just doesn't build up quite as well as I wanted it to be. I guess what that's what people have with... Oh, what? Well, I guess that's what everybody has the problem with this one. Oh, for this film. Like, this first half is kind of uh, slow. But, however, the good news is whenever... When he does go into the actual suit, or and he does get trained by, or oh yeah, by Hope, it is automatically awesome and fun. On like that's the reason why I think this film is close to being great. I right, so literally that is the only problem I have with this movie. Wait, right, so, oh, uh, I really like Paul Rudd as I mean actually I love Paul Rudd as as Ant Man himself. He's a lot. He's enjoyable. He's funny, and clever. Or, uh, Michael Douglas is very enjoyable as Hank. Uh, and, on uh, his daughter is very enjoyable, too. Oh, uh, and that's what the characters are. They're enjoyable enough. Oh, uh, then, the guy who's playing his yellow jacket does a really good job as well. 
<laughs> Sorry. Uh, but but that's not the best part of the film. Uh, well, aside from on the main character being the best thing, but here's the other uh, show stealer. The uh, the effects. They are just incredible. And I love how he uh, shrinks himself down to size. And he can even shrink himself even more to size. And of course, you see when you see him in Captain America Civil War, he grows oh, into a giant uh, person. And it's so cool. Even when you see the trailer for um, for Ant-Man and the Wasp, or you see him grow up. Or grow into a bigger size too. Well, but and uh, and then also in a strange way, sometimes it kind of reminds you, well, not only like well, like your typical uh, on shrinking down story, but it also kind of reminds you of like an Alice in Wonderland movie, like how oh he sees these strange obstacles and stuff. Oh, then, well, and that's pretty much what I got to say. So, uh, but yeah, the special effects are just a scene stealer, and they really make the film very entertaining to sit through. Even the action scenes are a lot of fun. The best part of the, f the best funny scene in the movie, oh yeah, is when, uh, that's actually just two of them. Um, two very funny moments that are, well, there's enough funny moments in the movie, I'm just talking about the two funniest parts of the movie. Wait, one, of course, he heads down to the Avengers headquarters, which you obviously have seen in, in the ending of the second film, of, known as Age of Ultron. And then uh, he has to f he fights off the uh, the Falcon, on and he only gets a few minute cameo, but and uh, and obviously we will see him in an event in the uh, the new Captain America movie or like Civil War. Um, but uh, but the way they were doing in that in that scene was obviously hilarious. The other funniest part of the movie is the climax of the film, where um, or where it takes place in the Thomas the Tank Engine set. Hilarious as hell. My brother and I laughed at that scene when we saw the trailers to that film. So, um, I, I, I like, I believe it was from when we, we went to go see, um, on uh, Jurassic World, the first, uh, well, Jurassic Park 4, or in theaters. So, um, uh, so, yeah, overall, I think Ant-Man was actually close to being a great film. I guess that they got director Edgar Wright to actually direct this film instead of being one of the writers or something. I honestly think this would have been, like, like a really great comic book movie. Wait, it was close, but uh, but I could easily say it's a wickedly good film. So, what do you think about it? Just comment below, follow me on Twitter and Facebook, subscribe to my Facebook, no, oh, subscribe to my YouTube page, follow me on Stardust as well, and I will see you in a little bit. I am the Boston Indian Critic, and I'm signing out. Take care.